Hello and welcome to week four of remote learning. My name is Mr. Minton and for those of you that don't know me I am Mr. Kiley's student teacher and this week we're going to be going over the 1980s. So we're going to be trying to do a whole decade in a week and in this uh, PowerPoint presentation I'm going to be trying to go over the key events with you from that decade I'll try to keep it under about 30 minutes. So in order to do that, what I did was tied it to the uh, KBAT. So we're going to be going over Ronald Reagan, George H. W. Bush, HIV slash AIDS, the war on drugs. We're also going to touch base with some significant political, social, cultural, and economic events that occurred during the decade. And later on in the week, you'll eva evaluate their impact on today. So Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan was the uh, 40th president of the United States. He was elected in 1980. He defeated uh, President Jimmy Carter. Uh, Ronald Reagan was a former actor. Uh, most of his movies uh, and television programs were set in about the 1940s and 1950s. Uh, during World War II, he did a lot of training films for the military and a lot of uh, pro-American, you know, um, war bond type movies uh, uh, during that time period. Uh, he was elected governor of California. He served as governor from 1967 to 1975. He was governor during one of the most turbulent times in California's history. Uh, in 1968, a lot of riots going on there after the assassination of uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. He has the distinction of being the first actor in the nation's history to be a, elected president. Some of the key events in Reagan's presidency were the Ira Iranian hostage uh, situation, uh, the Iran-Contra sca uh, scandal, and he's been credited with his efforts from his administration with uh, helping bring uh, about the end of the Cold War with the Soviet Union. We're going to touch base on the Ar Iranian hostage situation and also on the Iran-Contra in further slides. George H.W. Bush. Now, he served as President Reagan's uh, vice president during his two administrations. He is a descendant of wealthy East Coast family, uh, moved to Texas with his family, he got started in the oil business. During World War II, he was a decorated Navy fighter pilot. He got shot down during combat uh, in the Pacific. He also was the former head of the United States Central Intelligence Agency, and along with being the 41st uh, president of the United States, he is the patriarch of a very uh, influential family. Uh, his son, George W. Bush, was the 43rd president of the United States, and his other, another one of his sons was a former governor uh, of Florida, uh, that was Jeb Bush. Some of the key events during George H.W. Bush's presidency were the fall of the Berlin Wall, the first Gulf War, and also the Tiananmen Square uh, democracy demonstration uh, in China. HIV AIDS. HIV stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus Infection, and AIDS is the acronym for Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. Now, this was a, um, a huge epidemic during the 1980s. Uh, the disease AIDS uh, first appeared in the early 1980s and rapidly became an epidemic among uh, gay men, intravenous drug users who shared needles, uh, people that had blood transfusions during operations, and women with infected sexual partners were also at risk of contracting AIDS. Ryan White uh, was a young man uh, who got a, uh, had an operation, got a blood transfusion. Ryan was 13 years old in 1984 when he had this operation. Uh, Ryan was from Kokomo, Indiana. And he contracted the AIDS virus uh, due to the blood transfusion given to him. And his doctors had given him six months to live. At this time, basically, when you, when you came down with AIDS, it was uh, early on, it was almost a death sentence. So they gave him six months to live, and he reason I'm bringing up Ryan White, because if there was anybody during the 1980s that was like the public face about education, about the uh, HIV, HIV AIDS uh, virus, it was Ryan White. 
Uh, he was a young man. He tried to go back to school. But because of the stereotype and the prejudices and the fears at the time, everybody thought that you could contract AIDS just by being in the same room with somebody, breathing the air they breathed, you know, sitting in the seat they sat in. Uh, they, the school board did not allow him to go back to school. So long story short, um, big push to get this young man back into school. Matter of fact, one of his uh, biggest supporters and was a lifelong friend was uh, the pop star uh, Elton John, uh, who started uh, speaking on his behalf also. Um, Ryan White got back into school. Um, unfortunately, he died in 1990, just one month before his high school graduation. It's been estimated uh, since the beginning of the AIDS crisis in the early 80s that about 675,000 people died of the infection. And it's estimated that still 13,000 people die uh, of it each year. Um, as bad as this thing was, one of the, if there could be a silver lining that came out of it, uh, it was Ryan White uh, and his situation uh, made the nation take a look at uh, ourselves as a society in regards to this and, and, and our prejudice and our fears and using people as scapegoats. And I think that it uh, will go over more in, uh, in another slide uh, later on, but I think it did a lot to uh, make America aware of, uh, uh, of our uh, fears and prejudices, uh, uh, especially against the gay uh, population. War on drugs. War on drugs has been around for a, for a while. Um, it, it started off, some of the earliest uh, things that I seen on it were uh, um, African Americans being persecuted in the New Orleans area uh, for cocaine use back in the early 1900s. And then um, in the 1920s along the Mexican border, uh, Mexican Americans and, and Mexican immigrants were being uh, persecuted for uh, marijuana. But officially, it, uh, the war on drugs started President Nixon officially declared a war on drugs in 1971, identifying drug use as public enemy number one. In 1973, he went on to further create the Drug Enforcement Administration because they were seeing when he, the first couple of years of the uh, war on drugs, there was a lot of miscommunication between state, federal, local law enforcement agencies on how to deal with this. So they came up with the the Drug Enforcement Administration to be like the overarching coordinator for this uh, war on the on drugs. 1981, the Medellin cartel uh, rises to power in Colombia. I mention this because this is where we start uh, start seeing the huge amounts of cocaine, especially at this time, some marijuana, but mostly cocaine, coming into the United States. It originally, was coming in through the uh, port of Miami. And the creation by the Drug Enforcement Agency and local uh, Drug Enfor Enforcement Administration, excuse me, and uh, local agencies uh, really started interdicting the drugs that were coming in from the Medellin cartel. The cartel had gotten so powerful in those couple of years of bringing those drugs in that they were able to buy off, you know, nation states, uh, Panama, uh, Noriega. Uh, Manuel Noriega, the president of Panama at the time, was allowing uh, the Medellin cartel, he had a partnership with Pablo Escobar, allowing uh, drugs to start coming in through Panama when uh, we started cr uh, clamping down on Miami. So uh, the, they were just buying off politicians and uh, law enforcement agencies. 1983, we had the police chief of Los Angeles, um, along with that, it was police chief's name was Daryl Gates, and along with the uh, Los Angeles Unified School District, they started a program called DARE. It stood for Drug Abuse Resistance Education Program uh, to get school kids, make them aware um, of the dangers of drugs. Now, it's been, came to, at the end of this, that it really didn't do much to curtail the use of drugs but it was such a popular program that at one point over 75% of the school districts in the United States had the DARE program. Along with this, in 1984, Nancy Reagan, the wife of President Reagan, launched her own Just Say No to Drugs anti-drug campaign. And although along with it, 
along with like the DARE program, it was proven to be largely ineffective. It, her program did uh, increase uh, national awareness of this because in 1985, in a poll, only 2% uh, of Americans, when asked what the major problem was in the United States, said it was drugs. By 1989, over 64% of the uh, American population said the number one problem in the United States was drugs. So even though it wasn't effective as far as getting you know, school children, especially not to uh, use drugs later on, it did bring public awareness, bring drugs to more public uh, prominence. In the mid-1980s, due to the interdiction down there in Tampa area and other areas along the coast, um, the Mexican border became the major point of entry for cocaine headed into the United States. Along this time also, crack, which was a cheap, addictive, and potent form of cocaine, was first developed. And its popularity, uh, especially among the uh, poorer sections of inner, large inner cities, uh, because one, it was very potent, but it was also very, very addictive, plus it was a lot cheaper than powdered cocaine. And it, it's really started uh, playing havoc on the inner city neighborhoods because of the uh, very addictive uh, form of this drug. So because of this, in not October of 1986, President Reagan signed into effect the Anti-Drug Abuse Act of 1986. Now this act, um, it was met with a lot of people that liked it because it put stiffer sentences on drug uh, users and uh, people that were selling drugs. But the problem with this was is that the majority of the people that were being arrested and given these stricter uh, sentences were from the uh, inner cities where the crack cocaine epidemic was uh, the highest. And what was happening, it was found out that the majority of people that were ending up in prison with these stiff sentences were the poor people of color. Whereas uh, if you were white and upper to middle, you know, middle class to upper class and you got busted with cocaine, you served a lot uh, lesser sentence. And it's been estimated since 1971 that the United States has spent over a trillion dollars on its war on drugs with not a whole lot to show for it other than a lot of people in prisons. So significant political effects uh, are events that happened during the 1980s. We had the Iranian hostages released. Now what had happened is during Jimmy Carter's administration, when the Iranian revolution happened in Iran and they overthrew the Shah, they also, also the revolutionaries also overthrew our embassy and a number of hostages were taken. So in his run up to his campaign for the 1980 presidency, President Reagan had stressed that these hostages will be released. They, these hostages ended up in the long run being held for over four, they were held for 444 days. And Reagan had said, look, the, you know, he had told Iran that, you know, when I become president, if I become president, you will release these uh, hostages or there will be repercussions. Long story short, when uh, President Reagan was elected and he took office in January of 1981, uh, Iran released the hostages. This was seen as a big uh, political win for uh, President Reagan. Now in 1980 also, uh, we had the Moscow Olympics. Uh, they were to be held in Moscow during 1980, but uh, in late 1979, Moscow had uh, invaded Afghanistan. And the United States, along with uh, several other countries, uh, decided to boycott the Summer Olympics in Moscow uh, due to um, the Soviet Union's invasion of Afghanistan. Uh, seems kind of funny when you look back on it. Uh, we're now in our 19th year of being in Afghanistan ourselves. Okay, so another event that happened was the Iran-Contra. Again, we have Iran on the, uh, on the radar here. So what had happened is after the hostages were released, a couple of years later, some uh, seven American hostages were um, taken in Lebanon by Hezbollah, which is basically a proxy, uh, been deemed a terrorist organization by the United States. These seven Americans were taken hostage, and at the time, Iran was at war with Iraq during the 1980s, for most of the 1980s, and they needed military weapons, military hardware. 
So behind the scenes, um, it's been said that, uh, and this all came to light during this time period in the early 80s, that the United States were selling military uh, anti-tank and anti-aircraft uh, uh, missiles to Iran and that they were doing this in order to get the seven hostages uh, released. Well, this was pretty significant because the United States has always had a policy that we would not deal with terrorists. So what came to find out was this wasn't so much a money for or weapons for hostages. It was more uh, we were giving the money to uh, selling the missiles in, uh, to Iran to get money that was funneled into a fund uh, to support rebels in Central America to overthrow the communist uh, government of Nicaragua. Uh, and the group there was called the Sandinistas. So even though President Reagan and uh, Pre uh, Vice President Bush were never implemented in this, uh, a lot of members of their administration went to prison. And uh, it was a black eye for the, for the Reagan administration uh, during the 80s. One of the significant political events that came out of the uh, 1980s was also Martin Luther King uh, getting a federal holiday. Uh, for those of you, you all know that uh, Martin Luther King, famous civil rights leader, was assassinated in 1968. He was the first African American to have a federal holiday uh, named in his honor. Another first uh, that happened, to, uh, political event that happened during the 1980s was Sandra Day O'Connor was. Uh, elected to the Supreme Court. She was nominated by President Reagan and selected to the Supreme Court. And she had the distinction of being the first female uh, justice on the Supreme Court. Another, and I say it's a significant political effect uh, event that happened uh, during the 1980s was the birth of cable news. Because as you know now, uh, if you've ever watched the news during the um, political elections, uh, cable news is the one that's you know, on 24 hours doing the results. So it was a it was a political event. Plus, it was the CNN was the uh, first all day 24 hour just devoted to cable news. Also, during the 1980s, we had the Polish shipyard strikes. What this was was Poland at the time was under the uh, control of the Soviet Union. Uh, they had a pol you know the Polish government was communist. Um, in February of 1988, the government of Poland um, hiked the prices on consumer, the food prices, by 40%. At this time, the Solidarity uh, Union of Shipyard Workers in Gdansk, Poland, uh, led by Lech Walesa, went on strike on, on May 2nd to demonstrate against this. Well, these strikes uh, spread into, like, Russia, Belarus. They were spreading all over through U Eastern Europe. Lech Walesa was arrested. He spent some time in prison. But what's significant about these Polish shipyard strikes is it's been said that these were the precursor to the um, upsurge of wanting democracy and more rights within the Soviet, former Soviet Union that led to its downfall. And then we also had the Berlin Wall. Um, Berlin Wall, along a symbol of the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union, this um, finally fell in 1989. And uh, that wall separating uh, East and West Berlin um, mainly fell because of uh, some of the uh, the Polish shipyard strikes and what was started by Lech Walesa and the uh, Solidarity Movement. Significant social events that occurred during the 1980s. Uh, we had the Challenger disaster. And the way I'm saying that this is a significant social event is that our society had always looked up to NASA and the space program. And even though we had lost three astronauts back during Apollo 1, um, we had always taken a significant amount of pride. You know, We had landed on the moon. We were shooting for the stars. And NASA was like at the forefront of this. Well, it came out of the Challenger disaster when this occurred in January of 1986. January 28th of 1986, it exploded shortly after liftoff killing all seven astronauts. It was found in the uh, after action reports on this is that this could have been prevented had NASA and some of the other engineers um, taken the advice of the other engineers that were saying that it was too cold to launch the space uh, shuttle and that the O-rings that separated the different stages would be brittle and there was a chance for an explosion. When this all came out, uh, it kind of uh, 
put a sour taste in the mouth of the American public against NASA and the space program. A lot of uh, different social things were coming out during the 1980s. I remember living through them. There was a lot of video games, Nintendo. Uh, a lot of them in the early 80s were coming out of Japan. Nintendo was one of the big players. Um, at the bottom there of the picture, you can see one of the Nintendo PlayStations from the 80s. Also, personal computers. Personal computers were coming out. They had gotten to the price where you know, the average person could afford a computer. So you've seen a lot more uh, using these to play video games on, to do uh, very basic uh, social media at the time as far as sending emails. This was all new and, and different. Cellular phones were coming out. The first mass-produced uh, cellular phone. I remember seeing one of these. I've used these. Uh, this was the Motorola 800X, or 8000X, excuse me. And we used to call it the brick because this thing was as heavy as a brick. It was huge. But we thought it was the greatest thing because we could make a phone call for 20 cents a minute and not be tied to a cord. Take it with you. We also had the Rubik's Cube that came out. And uh, this was a craze. I remember everybody was playing this. They were doing it underwater. They were doing it blindfolded. They were having national competitions to see who could put it together the fastest. Um, we also had Pac-Man. I remember playing Pac-Man. Um, that, Space Evaders, a lot of the, the computer games. And then also music videos. Music videos came out August 1st, MTV, uh, 1981. And the first video was uh, Video Killed the uh, Radio Star. And uh, it was 24-hour videos on MTV. We had significant cultural events that took place during this time period also. Music, MTV, uh, you were seeing these videos. You had a lot of new genres that were, that were uh, coming out and, and making the national headlines. Uh, some of these were hip-hop. Um, you had uh, pop, of course. Um, you had punk during this time. You had the big hair bands of the 80s. Um, the more hairspray, the better. And we're talking um, all these bands that uh, were coming out on uh, MTV. Very, uh, everybody was dressing like Madonna, uh, so forth and so on. We also had the workout craze. Uh, everybody was wearing leotards and these stockings and headbands and uh, sweatbands and doing a bunch of you know, the workout crazes. There was videos online. There's videos you could buy. Everybody seemed to have, anybody that was anybody had their own workout video. Another big significant cultural event during the 1980s was the royal wedding between Prince Diana and Prince Charles. Uh, it's been estimated over a billion people worldwide watched this wedding. Another thing that came out during the 80s was, and, and I think that, I had mentioned this earlier, I think the, the AIDS epidemic once people realize that, uh, you know what, this is this is a virus. You're not going to catch it by sitting next to somebody. You're, you know, it's not uh, something that you're going to get by hugging somebody. That it brought the the gay rights movement to the forefront, albeit through a very tragic event. But the gay rights movement started getting more traction as far as uh, rights for for gay Americans. And last but not least, we have the significant economic events of the 1980s. And on this, when Reagan came to power, one of the things, uh, excuse me, when Reagan got elected, one of the things that he had ran on was getting the economy back on track. What had happened during the 1970s was that the United States economy was in a uh, it was in a mess. Um, the recession of the 1970s marked the end of the post uh, World War II economic boom, and during the 1970s until early 1981, uh, just uh, at the very start of Reagan's administration, the U.S. had experienced a lasting period of st what they called stagflation, which was a combination of high unemployment and inflation. Now, Reagan's economic policy and later on uh, in, the, in the 80s, going into the early 90s, George H.W. Bush's uh, was based on four pillars. Um, they were to reduce the growth of federal spending, reduce the federal income tax and capital gains, uh, reduce government regulation, and tighten the money supply to reduce inflation. A way in which um, Reagan and his administration did this was with the supply-side economics. 
which is the theory that advocates lower tax rates so people can keep more of their income. People that, that were proponents of this plan argue that it results in more savings, investment, production, and ultimately greater economic growth. Now, opponents of this plan stated it mainly helped the wealthy. And, you know, this is true. It did mainly help the wealthy. But it also created a chain uh, reaction effect. It benefited lower income workers uh, with new job openings and uh, higher wages. So this trickle down theory, as it was called there, there was, yes, it, it does help the wealthy, but it's also going to trickle down to the other uh, levels of society and benefit them also. Now, uh, what was in contrast to President, President Reagan wanting to cut, cut federal programs and spending is that he spent billions on the military. He realized that the cuts um, that were made to the uh, military after Vietnam um, drastically limited our ability to um, succeed and uh, protect our interests as a, as a superpower. So he spent billions and billions of dollars to upgrade the military. And it's been said that the amount of money that he spent on the military during this, his administration uh, was one of the reasons uh, that the Soviet Union uh, collapsed because they spent so much of their GDP on trying to keep up with uh, weapons technology and build up a military uh, to keep up with what Reagan was spending that it just uh, devastated their economy, which led to the eventual downfall of the Soviet Union. So we have um, a decade and about 26 minutes and 30 seconds. So uh, I hope that uh, you got uh, the significant events out of this. What we're going to be doing later on in the week is that I've got some documents that you're going to review to answer some questions on, on key events during the 1980s. And also it's going to uh, um, end up at the end of the week with taking what you learned from this uh, slide sold presentation and those documents to be able to come up with what you feel was the most significant event during the 1980s and which you will post on the discussion board with uh, a couple of your fellow classmates at the uh, end of the week. So I hope you uh, have a great week, that you're all healthy, and eventually I look forward to seeing you all again in person. Thank you and take care.